Good evening, Victory Word and Word family. Welcome to your worship and word experience tonight. Tonight, today is Wednesday, Wednesday night Bible study. And we are so grateful and thankful that we made it to Wednesday night, Wednesday, the middle of the week. And we are thanking God that he has allowed us to come together tonight to study his word together. Amen. So before we get started, let us pray. Most gracious Father, we come before you first and foremost, always saying thank you. Lord, we thank you because not only are you our God, you are our Father, and holy is your name. Father, we thank you for keeping us from danger, seen and unseen. Lord, we ask that you unite us on this evening so that we can prepare ourselves to receive a word from you. That is our prayer on tonight, and it is so in Jesus' name. Amen, and we praise God. On well, Victory Word, we just got to say thank you. Just thank you, Lord, because you have been so good. You have been so good to us, Lord, that we don't know what we would do without you. And so, Father, tonight, as we as we get into this word, we just want to, to just bless you. Amen. So, we're going to go into the book of Philippians, the fourth chapter, starting at the eighth verse, eighth and ninth verse tonight. And the scripture says, finally, brethren. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have, which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. And I want to teach tonight from the sermon or from the teaching topic, Levels of Maturity in Christ, Part 2. Amen. We've been talking about this. This is the second week. Last week we didn't have Bible study, but the week before, and we were teaching on the maturity, how we mature in Christ. And so tonight in this book, the writer lets us know what we should think on. Not only what we should think on, but how we should have our focus in our daily lives. Uh, the writer says, think on things that are pure Think on things that are lovely. Think on things that have a good report. There are so many times when things are not going the way we would like them to go. And there's things that we need to think on to keep our minds staying focused on him. And sometimes it is hard to keep our mind focused on righteous things or positive things when we have so many other things and distractions around us that try to stop us from being who God called us to be. And so on tonight, what what one thing I did in this in in teaching this or let me back up in reading this. He says, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do them. And the peace of God shall be with you. I believe the writer, who we believe is Paul, speaking to the Philippians, is saying, he said, use him, use him as an example. There are different men and women of God that are great examples that we can follow when we've gone through trials and tribulations and situations and circumstances that we just don't understand. There are those that have paved the way that can show us the way to go 
during our storms, during our during our our trials, during our during our uh, tribulation time. There are different ones God assigns to us, puts in our life, so that we might be able to to have some guidance while we're navigating through situations and circumstances. And as we learn and navigate our spiritual man, it matures in Christ because we have taken in the word of truth. And we have, as the old folks say, we've eaten and drank the word of truth and we have allowed it to grow within us. And the more and more that we allow God's word to grow in us, the more we're able to deal with situations and circumstances that try to hinder us. And so tonight, the process of faith, because to be mature in Christ, there has to be a process. Amen. There has to be a process. So tonight, the process of faith, part two, rely. Who do we rely on? And so in order to grow, you must first learn how to rely on someone or something. And that means to have the confidence and the belief. And so let's go to Proverbs, the third chapter, the fifth and sixth verses. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. When we acknowledge the Christ that lives in us, it will and he will direct our path. That's what we need. Lean not to our own understanding. We have to rely on a spiritual principle, a spiritual truth that will take us to another level, another dimension, so that we will be able to deal with the things that are going on in us, around us, and we won't lose our mind while we're dealing with these things. There's too many times where we just lose it. And we as the body of Christ in this season have to be, we have to be fortified. We have to be steadfast, unmovable. We have to be focused and know that God will do just what he said he would do. It just, he's going to do what he needs to do. We just have to be in a position to do what we're supposed to do when the situations and circumstances arise. Because as we live, brothers and sisters, there's always going to be something that arises that we were not expecting. But one thing we do expect, and that is for God to be in charge. And once we trust in the Lord, lean not to our own understanding, acknowledge his way for our lives each and every day, then we will be able, that will show the maturity that we have in Christ. Amen? Amen. See, it's, no one said this was going to be an easy process. We're just telling you tonight that there is a process and that we have to follow and, and, and follow the process in a way that, that we grow, that we can grow from it. We have to do the, what's necessary in our lives for us to grow. And the only way that you grow is that something has to happen to show what you have in you. There is going to be something to happen in our lives to let us know where we stand in our spiritual walk with Christ. And sometimes we fall, sometimes we fall short, but as we mature, we learn from those mistakes. We learn from the trial. We learn from tribulations. We learn from situations. We learn from uncomfortability, how to continue to grow in him. We have to grow in him. But in order to grow in him, we have to learn of him. 
We have to understand who he is. We have to know that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. And you can't seek him just when you want something. You got to seek after God when you're trying to grow in him so that you can be a, a servant in the earth to do what? Help someone else grow. So that's the first thing. The first thing is rely. Secondly, second thing is request. Now, remember, we're talking about the process of faith. And so we're talking about request, request. Philippians 4 and 6, it says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request, requests be made known unto God. Whatever it is that you're requesting, you have to make your request to God when you're spiritual, as you're growing spiritually, rather. You have to make your, 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 your spiritual request unto him. And when you give it to God, live with the answer that he gives you. Because there are many times God has given us the answer and we pay no attention to it. That lets you know your level of maturity. Sometime, sometimes God's answer is no. And then sometimes he doesn't say anything. And when he doesn't say anything to me in my spirit, that means for me to stand still and wait. Can you wait on your blessing? Can you wait for your breakthrough? Can you wait for your miracle? You have to be patient. And then being patient doesn't mean be disgruntled, not to be upset, not to be going through all kinds of emotional ups and downs because you are throwing a spiritual temper tantrum. We have to get out of that if we're going to mature in Christ, because the more that we mature in him, we don't have to understand everything that he's doing all we have to do as you mature is to be able to accept what God has said. Many times we don't accept what God has said, and then we do things in our own power, under our own strength, under our own uh, premise of what we think. And that, then when it falls by the wayside and doesn't work out for us, then we want to say, I should have listened. I, man, I wish I would have. By then, it's too late. It's too late. So, brothers and sisters, realize that when you make your request to God, whatever that request is, be mature enough to wait on the answer. Be mature enough to wait on him. He won't leave you. He won't forsake you. But he may not answer you when you want him to. But that's okay, because as you grow and mature in him, you realize that he has your best interest. And whatever God says that's for me will be for me. Amen. So request. Number three. Number three, release. There has to be a release in your maturity in Christ and, and the process of faith that grows you to be more mature in Christ. There has to be a release. So let's go to Mark eleven twenty five. 25. Mark eleven twenty five 25 says, and when ye stand praying. Now, first of all, this is for some praying people. And when ye stand praying, forgive. If ye have aught against any, that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. As you mature in Christ, you truly learn how to do what? Forgive. Mm, mm, mm. You ought to clap your hands right there. There are some things you have to be able to forgive people for. And sometimes you have to forgive folks who don't even care that you forgave them. They don't even think they've done anything, said anything. They're just right. And sometimes you just have to allow that person to be who they are and as you mature and grow, you realize you don't have to win every fight. Because God is the, the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. 
You don't have to prove who you are with people. All you have to do is walk upright and do what God told you to do. The way he he's maturing you. Whatever the path, whatever path he has you going down, then he has to have your ear. He has to have your ear. You have to be in tune. As you mature in Christ, you can't get upset with every person that doesn't agree with you. You can't be upset with everyone that doesn't doesn't see it the way you see it or share your views. As you mature, you allow people to be people. Just allow them to be who they are. And whoever they are, you don't allow them to stop you from being who God called you to be. So you got to pray or when you pray, when you pray, when you stand praying, forgive. Forgive, brothers and sisters. Learn how to forgive. Sometimes people have done you wrong, said some things they shouldn't have said, called you out of your name, but you had to allow that Christ spirit to live in you and not lose your... David said on one occasion in the scripture that he held his tongue for peace's sake. Sometimes it's just better to stay peaceful than to be righteous or to be right. Excuse me. It's always good to be righteous, but sometimes it's better to be peaceful and have peace than to be right and start confusion. Because there's a lot of people that can be right and will just because you write does not make you righteous. So you have to understand that oh, as you grow and mature, you don't look at things the same way as you did when you were when you were younger in your belief. And the scripture said, when I was a child, I thought as a child. I understood as a child. But the writer said, but when I became a man, I did what I put away childish things. In other words, when I grew up, when I became comfortable in being who God called me to be, and I stopped worrying about what you thought I should be, then I was able to hear what he had for me, and I was able to walk down that path that has been destined for me. But as you as, until you grow spiritually, you, you may still have an identity crisis. And when you're still trying to please other people, you have an identity crisis. When, you, when, when your whole life is, is, is ran by what other people think, what other people say, what other, what other people's suggestion is, one day you're on this side of the road, the next day you're on that, you're being pulled in so many different directions. You got to say, wait a minute, wait a minute. What did God say? Not, not what did mom say, dad say, the job say. What did God say? As it pertains to you and your happiness. Let me tell you something tonight, sisters and brothers. Happiness is based on what's happening. But joy comes from within. There's some things, even during this pandemic crisis, that God still allowed us to have peace in the midst of all this confusion. As you mature in Christ, you realize that you don't have to rip and run. You don't have to go to everything. You don't have to do this and, and people mad because you didn't come to this and do this and do that and do the other. No, you have to allow the God that lives in you to lead, guide, and direct you. Yes. You can, we can no longer depend on someone else's faith to carry us through. It's good. Mama's faith was good. Daddy's faith was good. But what is, where is my relationship with him? Where is my relationship with God? You got to ask yourself that question on this night. Stop waiting on someone else to pray for you. Learn how to pray for yourself. I hear so many people, oh, can you pray for me? When was the last time you prayed for you? Or not just for you, for someone else. Ask yourself this question, sisters and brothers. We have to mature and be more mature in, 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 in our, we have to be not only mature, but we have to be more calculated in our answers, in our, in our response to how we speak and what we say to people. 
Because some people don't want information. They just want, they, they don't want inspiration. They want your information. See, sometimes people just want your information so they can share it with other people and say, you know, Brother Mike, he's this, Pastor Mike, you know, he pastor on Sunday, but he's something else on the other day. See, and, and you have to be mature enough to know when who to associate with. You can't associate with everybody. You can't allow everybody in your circle. You can't allow everyone to know your business, your plan. A lot of us use Facebook, tell all our business when we're on vacation. And there's nothing wrong. Don't get me wrong. A lot of us mean well, but you got to be careful how we use these social platforms to because uh, we open ourselves up to so many things. So many things we open ourselves up to. Everybody don't need to know everything about you. And as you mature spiritually, you should understand that the more and more that you give your life over to God, over to Christ, and you allow him to live in you, you have a bullseye on your back. And the enemy is coming at you with everything he has because he wants to stop that word that you have in your mouth that can change a generation. So remember, be careful how you navigate, how you move through. Everyone doesn't need to know all of your movements, naturally or spiritually so. Amen. Amen. So after the release, we have to learn how to receive. Receive. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians 2.13. 2, for 1 Thess, Thessalonians 2.13 says, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. I like that because it said when we heard the word of God, we didn't say it was the word of men, but we took it as the word of God, as but as but, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Once you get this word in you and believe it, it will work for you. It will work for you. It will work for you. Not only for you, it will work through you. That's how good the word of God is. It can change the, the word of the word of truth can change you know, change minds, change thoughts, change, change the way you see things. It will change your vision. It will change how you look at other people. It will change how you, how you address others in, in everyday living. Because the way you eat and drink this word, how it grows you spiritually so. And that's what is so important today in 2021 how we look at things how we process things how we adapt to certain situations and challenges so the more and more the more and more word of truth that i have in me the more and more i can deal with all of the other things that's trying to distract me I won't allow outside distractions determine my inside reaction. I'll say that again. I will, as I mature in Christ, I don't allow outside uh, uh, distractions to to overtake my inside reactions. No, I, I just refuse to. 
because it does not matter how you feel about me, even though I would love for you to love me, like me. But at the end of the day, my focus is not on how you feel about me. My focus should be on how I am reacting to what God has for me. And you have to do the same thing. You have to get to a point in your life where you block out all the noise, all the naysayers. And you say, you know what, Lord, I'm just going to follow you. See, so the more and more you receive his word in you, the higher and higher you go. Amen. And the last one, this is the last. React. Our reaction. This is all a part of the process of faith. Reaction. Let's go to the book James. Let's go to the book of James, the first chapter. James 1. James 1, 19. It says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Okay, they cut you off while you was driving. Okay, you can't speed up and try to catch them. Because different things happen that, that, that goes against how you feeling. You got to, I got to tell them. I got to let them know how I feel. I got to get this off my chest. We're living in a time now where you can be right and someone will try to destroy you just because they don't have their own emotions under control. Sisters and brothers, if somebody cuts you off or they're trying to beat you to that parking space, don't you allow that situation to get you so heated and so upset that it causes a confrontation and puts you in a position where you could lose your life over a parking spot, over someone doing a, 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 a un necessary gesture towards you and you get upset, you get hot, you get mad and then lose your life over something that simple. The enemy, it will try to trick you. So that's why I'm saying as we mature in Christ, we have to allow ourselves to have a thicker skin so that everything that someone says doesn't, doesn't di disrupt our world. Amen. Victory Word and Word family. Whether you are pushed or pulled, drained or fueled, loved or left, been hurt or been helped, it has all been a part of your spiritual growth. I'll say that again. You might want to write this down. Whether you are pushed or pulled, drained or fueled, loved or left, been hurt or helped, it has all been a part of your spiritual growth. Everything that you've been through has allowed you to get to the level that you are. Thank God for it. You got to thank him for your good days, your, your down days, your, your, your challenges. All of those things have, I pray, I'm talking to the believer now, that it has drawn you closer to your creator. For if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be today? Ask yourself the question, if God hadn't been with you through that storm, through that trial, that tribulation, that thing that you were going through and you didn't think you could make it, but by the grace of God, he brought you out. Not only did he bring you out, but he brought you out better than you were before you went in. He's the God 
of a second chance. Yes, he is. But I'm thankful that what I've gone through, he's the one that brought me out. See, you go through situations and circumstances, and he is the one that brings you out. So you ought to say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you because I might be the one that it might have been something I did to take me in. But, Lord, I'm so glad you brought me out. You ought to just say, Lord, thank you for bringing me out. When the enemy can't destroy your destiny, this is for the mature believer. You have to understand this. You may want to write this down. When the enemy can't destroy your destiny, he tries to delay it long enough until disappointment diminishes your desire. I'm going to say that one again. When the enemy can't destroy your destiny, he tries to delay it long enough until disappointment diminishes your desire. Whatever God put in you, that burning, that fire, that flame that's in you, don't allow the enemy to blow it out, to, to, to dis extinguish it. Don't allow him to stop you. Because what he's doing is trying to delay it. He can't stop it. He tries to put stumbling blocks in your way to delay it. He tries to delay your desire. But Psalms 37, 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, you got to delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. God gives, this is what, this, listen. Follow me right here, Victory Word and Word family. Follow me right here. God gives you the desires of your heart. He does not give you your heart's desires. I'll say that again for someone because you, you, you need to chew on this for a few moments. God gives you the desires of your heart. He does not give you your heart's desires. Well, brother pastor, what are you talking about? I'm glad you asked. The desires of your heart comes from your delight in him. Your heart's, de your heart's desire is based on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, the desires of your heart comes from your delight in him. Your heart's desire is based on you. My father used to tell me all the time, the more and more you get in God, your heart's desires change. Your desire is more to please your father, to please the one that woke you up in the morning. Your heart changes. Your heart, the more and more that you, you, you fulfill the will of God, you know you start looking at people in a different way. You start being more forgiveness forgiving. You're not always trying to be the most one that's always right, but you are the one that's trying to be righteous, giving people a chance to grow, giving people a, a, another opportunity or, or a loved one or whoever it might be. But you just remember, God gives you the desires of your heart. He does not give you your heart's desires because the desires of your heart comes from the desires of your heart comes from you delighting in him and your heart's desire is based on you. And when we start thinking about more than just ourselves, we will see the maturity of Christ being built up in us. Amen. Amen. Well, victory word. That's all I have for us tonight. I'm thankful for this, this time that we've had. Uh, if there's one that would like to uh, sow into our ministry, feel free to sow into our ministry through Givelify and through the different uh, platforms that we do have. Uh, we're just thankful and we love you. Uh, we're praying for you daily. And we know that God will do just what he said he would do. If there's one that would like to be a part or give their life back to Christ, all I need you to do is just pray this simple prayer with me. Lord, I'm a sinner, but I want to get back into your holy family. Father, I accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I ask that you just continue, Father, to forgive me of my sin. I want to be a mirror image of you in the earth. And I want to be more like you, not just in my talk, but in my walk. And if you prayed that prayer, that's all it took for us to get back into right standing with God. 
What I will challenge you to do is to get into a Bible-based teaching church that will teach you the reality of serving a true and living God. And if we're that church, the Victory Word Church, we are a church that is a judgment-free zone. We don't beat you up. We pick you up and we watch God lift you up. If you'd like to be a part of our ministry, please call the church office at 313-243-4512. Someone will answer the phone. If they don't answer, they will call you back and they will invite you to be a part of the Victory Word Church. Amen. Amen. Well, Victory Word, that's all I have for us tonight. I'm thankful for this time that we've had together. On behalf of myself, Lady T, and A.P. Oliver, we're in the ministering, the minister staff here at Victory Word. We just want to let you know that we love you. We miss you. We can't wait to see you. We're going to see you real soon. We shall see you soon. Remember, there is victory in the word, and we are living our future now. God bless you.